Hi all, Jason here. I'm at my bench. Um, I am going to start doing a series of shorter videos to kind of show you uh, tips and tricks and other bits of information that I think um, are useful if you're building or modding your own amps. And the first thing we're going to look at is the humble Xena diode. Now, these little things, I've got one in my hand here, very tiny thing. They're used in a Jose modded Marshall, so you'll often hear about you know, diode clipping and uh, diode clippers and so on. Um, they were used extensively in the Jose modded uh, Marshall era and are still used um, in modern production amps today uh, to give that kind of toothy, aggressive, um, you know, that clipping sound. It's, you can only really get it from, from these things. Now, this is the Kelly amp that we're in the middle of building here at the moment, and this is one of the Kelly PCBs. Now, this thing is, you know, as the name implies, a Kelly amp. It's based on uh, the Ho Jose Arredondo uh, modded Marshalls of the day, which were produced in California. And um, this board comes with, you've got the Zener diodes um, and transistor based clipping as well, actually, on here. So, what I'm going to do in this very first one of this at the bench series is um, hook up the oscilloscope to an amp um, with uh, where I put Xena diode clipping into it, and we'll have a look on my scope here at what these things do in and out of the circuit. And um, you know, hopefully from this video, you'll get a real sense of what these things are doing, how to use them, and how to tune your amp um, if you have got Xena diodes in it. The first thing we'll do is step through a little bit of theory so that by the time we get to look at the scope, hopefully it makes some sense. All right, well, to explain what the Xena diode's doing from a clipping perspective, I just drew up a quick schematic here, which is just the, uh, I guess, the part of the amp um, where they come into effect. So what we've got here is a pretty kind of standard setup for a Jose clipping Marshall. Um, this is uh, V2 tube, right? So um, second preamp tube. This is the cathode follower part of it, the second triode of V2. And you would normally see in a standard Marshall that this connects straight across into driving the tone stack, right? Which is our treble base and mid pots. And from the treble wiper, the middle lug of that uh, pot, we go off to the phase inverter. Now, in a uh, pre-tone stack master, so pre-tone stack master meaning the master volume has been moved to before the tone stack um, rather than after the tone stack. This is kind of you know, how Jose did it. Um, well, often he made it he made it switchable, but in many modern amps that look to replicate the classic sound of the Jose, they you just kind of move the master to this position in the circuit. And here we have the diode clipping set up, right, which are kind of sitting here in parallel with this one meg uh, pot to ground. Um, so to try and explain what these zeners are doing um, from a kind of, let's call it a theory perspective, I've got this little diagram over here as well, which is kind of showing a sine wave and how the zener diodes um, clip it, right, and they'll like clamp it at a certain defined point. Now the reason this happens right, is because you've got to think about what a Zener diode does and kind of how it works. Now, so if this was a standard diode, uh, the current could only flow one way through it and then um, you have what is called your um, breakdown voltage or reverse breakdown voltage, which is the level of which the diode itself will actually break down and allow current to occur. Now in a standard diode, like one you might use for um, rectifier in your amp, uh, like a 1N4007, you don't actually want that to happen because um, if, you, if you apply a voltage great enough to that diode um, in, in reverse, um, you'll be replacing your diode probably, right? So, however, a Zener diode is very different and it's, it's actually designed to be able to go into the reverse voltage mode. So, your current can flow in one direction uh, in the normal way through the Xenon diode and then the other way will only occur once the reverse uh, breakdown voltage 
has been reached or the Zener voltage, right? So these are, you know, in, in this example here where I'm using 20 volt Zeners, what it means is that as soon as you've got um, a voltage across this thing uh, in the reverse way, reverse current, that reaches 20 volts, the Zener diode is going to effectively break down, use that term, and it'll become conducting. It becomes conducting and it holds the voltage at 20 volts. It's quite remarkable that what it can do, right? So um, within, within the current variations that we're dealing with at this point in the amp, um, it can deal with the change in current as your signal changes and it still holds, will hold the voltage at no greater than 20 um, once it's in um, conducting state. In other words, once that um, the zener voltage has been reached. Now, when the uh, when the zener voltage, the reverse <coughs> breakdown voltage has not been reached, then the, the zener diode works like a normal diode and it will not pass current. So um, what that means in reference to what's going on here, and this is how we get our clamping, right, our clipping or our distortion on the wave, is, is when the current flows in one direction, all right, this is AC. Um, you can imagine, let's just say it's on the positive cycle. So I'll, I'll say that the current's kind of flowing this way. It's going to pass through this Zena diode, no problem. And this one here, as long as that um, is under 20 volts at this point, it won't allow anything through. So this is non-conducting. It's like an open circuit. It means that they have no impact. Nothing's going on here, right? Because this is blocking it. Which is why the signal, if measured, let's say at this point in the circuit, right? This is why uh, the signal here has no, it's not altered at all. Because one of the zeners is blocking this little, uh, these back-to-back -back zeners here from having any impact. Now, as soon as the waveform becomes large enough, voltage-wise, to move one of the, the blocking zener, if you like, into a conducting state, this happens. And the reason it happens is because once it's conducting, it'll hold the voltage at 20. No matter how big the voltage is that's applied to it, but within reason, um, it'll hold it at 20. So as the usual waveform would come up here, it actually gets clamped off at 20. And then, you know, once we go below 20 volts, the zener goes out of conducting state, and this becomes open circuit again. It has no impact on what's going on. And so the signal passes through with the voltage, you know, the, the, the AC um, passes through unaltered until the reverse happens, right? So on the, the negative cycle, so this way, uh, conducts up through here, not, no problem. And then um, this, dot, this center here will then become um, conducting. Uh, and once it becomes conducting, it's going to hold the voltage at 20 volts. So this is like plus 20 here, and this is minus 20 here. And we end up with a you know 40 volt peak to peak clamping rate. It's a little bit more than that because you do get a bit of voltage drop across the diode that is uh, in phase already, normally about 0.8, let's call it one volt, right, from round it up. So it's kind of, let's call it be 21 volts here and, and 21 volts here, so let's call it 42 volts peak to peak. Now, um, if that makes any sense at all, then that's good. And what it kind of means, right, is that once you can understand that what these, you know, kind of what they're doing, um, you can then tune your amp. So depending on where you want this clamping to come in, in your Jose circuit, your diode clipping circuit, um, you can choose the values here. So what I did is I set my oscilloscope up um, to this point in the circuit, or let's, let's just assume the master's on 10, right? So you want to take the global, the master volume out of circuit. So you could you know, set your oscilloscope at this point um, which I will do right in the in the next segment of the clip. I'll show you how how it all kind of works on the scope. 
So imagine the probe is set on here, this mass is on 10. Um, you can adjust the preamp level in your, in, in your amplifier, the gain, preamp gain, right? And see where your voltages are at, peak to peak, or you know, a peak here or peak here. And then you can choose the value of your zenith because you can get these in all sorts of values, right? Um, you know, right down to you know a couple of volts or less, and all the way up to you know way beyond what your amp, uh, what your amp is capable of producing at this point. So you can kind of dial in where you want that clamping um, to occur. So yeah, you know, kind of you know, tune it um, as you like. And if you kind of understand the theory here about you know um, one of these Zener uh, diodes at any point in time going into conducting mode um, and therefore clamping the voltage either at the you know the positive cycle or the negative cycle of your AC guitar signal, um, you can do asymmetric clipping as well. Which if you have a look at my um, most recent mod video on the Marshall 2204 JCM800, which is what I did, one of the modes, I had 24 volts here and 5.1 volt here. And so you end up with an asymmetric clipping. And what that means is that not only are you, you kind of, you know, you're clipping at different levels in here, but the, the, um, you see you get a kind of, it's not a uniform way because if you're clipping, say, up here, you're clipping less of the signal but if you're clipping at a, uh, only five volts on the negative cycle, you're clipping much more of the wave. So, you know, it's a, it's a tonal variation that's worth exploring. Okay, guys, I'm just here on the bench, and I'm, if you forgive me, I'm just holding my mobile phone here, so it might be a bit shaky. But I just wanted to show uh, what's going on with these clipping diodes. So I've got the scope here. I've got the probe set. At, this is the 33K slope resistor. To the tone stack right so what we're seeing here is I've got a uh, 150 milliamp peak to peak sine wave coming into the input of the amp and this is uh, with no Jose clipping on and so what we're seeing at the entry to the tone stack after the cathode follower as you can see an 88 uh, volt peak to peak signal now if I bring the gain up this is obviously on the dirty channel of the 800. Uh, if I bring the gain up, you'll see the wave clips, right? So we're starting to see compression and distortion at that point in the amp. If I bring it back down, so you can see it's kind of you know, starting to square off there at, what, 100 volts, right? Peak to peak. Um, now, if I bring in the 20 volt Zenas, see what happens all right so uh, you can see I'll we'll bring the gain back now this starts to square off at you know on my scope it's reading 45 46 47 volts peak to peak which is kind of what you'd expect with two 20 volt zeners back to back you've got a 40 volt uh, compression point there peak to peak you know so it's heading up towards 50 there on the peaks but you get the idea so you can see what the zeners are doing right at that point in the amp they are creating compression distortion square waves if you like obviously this isn't a guitar signal right this is a pure sine wave I bring the clipping back off you notice when the signal is low Uh, sorry, I'm clipping the 20 volt zeners in and out there. It has no impact, um, which is one of the reasons why, with the Jose uh, circuit like like this, when you roll back on the guitar volume, it cleans up nicely because it gets underneath the um, yeah, the clipping point, uh, the clamping voltage, if you like. So here I've got the clipping off, and you can see it's kind of what the square wave looks like. But at 100 volts peak to peak, the amp's loud. So if I go back to the 20 volts, it's not, the waveform's not identical, right? But you get the idea. Same kind of shape. 
the peak to peak voltage here is half um, and I've tried something different with this amp, something new for me I've got asymmetric clipping in the other mode so I've got a 24 volt Zener back to back with a 5 volt Zener and that's what we get so you can see that the the compression point here well the you know min and, min and max point is uh, is a bit different than what's going on with the 20s so at the top here at the obviously at the max voltage it's kind of the same but at the bottom of the wave it's far more compressed so tonally um, we'll get you know a different kind of um, Jose sound or a different kind of clipping sound between these two variations um, so yeah <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.